The exciting thing about Digital Humanities is the way it brings together the humanists, together with the technology people, together with the information people, and creates this really exciting multidisciplinary community of scholars. It's the collision of digital scrutiny exercises and interrogation tools with the humanities to support humanities researchers in analysing their material, forming deeper research questions around it and, and opening up new avenues of exploration. The representation of information and, and resources in a digital format certainly makes them much more, much more accessible. It's also about connecting them in new ways. For me it's a methodology. It really is a way of investigating a certain kind of material. So just as you would use technology to investigate um, the social sciences, um, you can use technology to investigate humanistic data, literature, history. What we're doing in the Sindari project is we're trying to take the three communities that need to come together, the, the, the e-scientists, the, the, the technology researchers, um, the archival experts, and then the historians. It's about trying to find ways of thinking about history of, of Europe, not just history of the national collections. We want to expose the hidden archives. I have a project called Haunted Planet, which is a, a spin-out company from, uh, from Trinity College. You have this idea of the ghost story, which has existed for many, many years. And it's been reinvented a number of times over the centuries. The novel was maybe the, the original form, but also in the 20th century it was reinvented as a, as a film. And what we're doing now is we're reinventing the ghost story as a, a location-based uh, augmented reality game. So we're overlaying the story world on top of the actual physical world that you see around you. One of the main projects I'm involved in is a project called Cultura. In that project, we're looking at analysing historical materials, specifically the 1641 depositions. The 1641 depositions are one of the treasures in the Trinity College Dublin Library. Um, a big rebellion breaks out in Ireland in October 1641, and we've over 8,000 witness statements about what allegedly happened. 20,000 pages of very noisy content, and noisy there in the sense that the language is inconsistent, the spelling is poor. A fundamental element is, is ensuring that the computer doesn't introduce ambiguity and error itself, and that can be quite a challenge. One of the things we try to do with the text is to identify entities in the text, people, places, events, dates, extract those so that they give other access paths onto material. We released the online depositions three years ago. We now have a community of about 60,000 users across the globe actively working on the 1641 depositions. Trinity is very much at the forefront of developing digital humanities, not just in Ireland, but across Europe. We've developed such close working relationships with the great IT companies that are based in Dublin, with IBM, with Google, with Facebook, with Intel. All of these relationships do give us a, 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 a great advantage. All of the techniques and tools that we derive from this, this 17th century material is directly applicable to today's content challenges. Think of how noisy Twitter is all of the, the blogosphere content that's out there. All of the analysis technologies that we use help us understand that, derive entities from it. All the personalization technologies that we use can help discern down the actual value for an individual user. Technology is a true enabler of highly original research. It allows us to ask questions of our material that we couldn't ask before. And this is the power of the technology. This is the power of digital humanities.